All right, so here I am with my uh, new co-host. It's a featureless cardboard box. Uh, why don't you say hello? So the other week I got a message from my good friend Paul saying, do I want to get a beer advent calendar? Uh, to which my response was, of course I do. Sign me up straight away. Uh, so he said, okay, uh, it's on its way. And I thought about it and messaged him back and said, they are actually full-size bottles, aren't they? They're not like little tiny miniature things. Because no, no, they are full-size uh, bottles of beer. Uh, this is from Beer Hawk. Uh, yes, it's a, a 24 bottle um, beer advent calendar. So I've no idea what it looks like on the inside. So let's uh, open this thing up and see what, it's, uh, see what it looks like, shall we? All right, so this is what it looks like out of the box. Uh, as you can see, it's quite colorful. Uh, it builds itself as being a beer advent Sure. So anyway, uh, just a quick look at all the front doors, as it were. I really like the, the designs on here, I like the artwork. So as you can see, each one has a number, so you can start every day in December with a nice tasty beer. <laughs> Up until Christmas Day, if you're still around at that point. Or you can just stockpile them and get absolutely shit-faced on Christmas Day itself. Uh, oh yeah, so there's art on the side, uh, different things, different bits of information uh, anyway enough of the box it's all about the contents <laughs> okay so i've got this thing propped up on a chair now it feels a bit like weekend at bernie's right so i have my uh, trusty tankard at the ready uh, i'm going to indulge in the number one i don't know what it is uh, i will not be partaking in every single bottle tonight unfortunately because uh, 24 bottles in one night would be uh, that would be insane wouldn't it so yeah, I will open them all up and show you them, and hopefully uh, you can get an idea of what's inside these. I have no idea whether or not every single box has the same beers or not, or whether it's a unique selection. Um, this is the first time I've ever seen it, so... Well, let's go, shall we? Let's open up a number one. Uh, Alright, what are we drinking tonight? We are having Sweet Child Opine. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you can see that, hopefully they're not getting too much of a glare on there. Uh, probably, uh, yeah, sweet child oh pine. I hope this is not pine flavoured beer. Uh, I have had some weird flavoured beers in the past. Uh, a seasonal pale ale, uh, and it's 4%. Okay, this is by Weird Beard. I have had Weird Beard before. Uh, okay, and it says about the beer there in writing, which is too small for me to read. But never mind, it's all about the taste, so let's see. What it tastes like, shall we? Alright, okay, so it was important to give it a sniff. Yep, that smells like beer. Um, see, that smells good. I'm enjoying that. Okay, so chin chin. Crisp, dry, hoppy. Cheers. That's good, that. Mm. Nice and frothy. Good stuff. Right, okay, so, and number two. Uh, uh, oh, it looks like a can. This is, ah, Amundsen. Everyday Hero. I don't believe I've had this one. I do like these kind of cans though, I mean the designs. Uh, Bit of a step up from the old days when everything was just brown. <laughs> uh, that's excellent artwork. I don't know if you can quite make that out. That's, that's really cool. So this is a New World IPA. Mm, cool. And how strength? How strong is it? Four point seven. I shall enjoy having that. Put that back in there just for the keeps. Right, number three. Uh, what's up? Yeah. Crispy. Right, what's behind number three? And this is Fine Ales OC Crush. And what kind of beer this is this? This is a oh orange and cranberry pale. <laughs> so I know there's probably some traditionalists out there who are going, uh, beer should taste like beer, should just taste like hops, but you know, I've had some great tasting beers. Um, that have got, what was the one I had the other day? It was strawberry and chocolate marshmallow stout. Ah, it was delicious, like eating ice cream with Guinness poured all over it. Uh, 
So yeah, I really do like the, the fruity ones, you know, the kind of the citrusy IPA kind of things. Um, there was a couple I had, um, not last year, year before the beer festival, there was Juice Springsteen, I think it was called, that was amazing. And a Mango Lassi IPA, I think it was called, Northern Monk. Might be getting that wrong, but they were like two of my favorite beers I've had in, in years, really. So yeah, OC Crush, Orange and Cranberry Pale. And there's the bottle. And this one is, da, 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 I can't see the strength anywhere. Um, four. So, so far these are all been fairly sensible strengths. Right, so uh, that was number three, and we go down this way to number four. And the can uh, is... Ooh, uh, ooh Schwing! <laughs> Schwing Pale Ale. 4.3, which is the Bad Co. Distilling, Brewing and Distilling Company. Bad Company. Can't get enough of your beer. And it's got a really nice little textured, textured tin. So brushed, 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 uh, brushed steel. Very manly. Uh, okay, I've never heard of Bad Company, Bring Company. Okay, 4.3. Back in there. Right, number fourth is. Four Pines Brewing uh, Pacific Ale. Another one I've never had. Da, 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 da. There we go. Obviously you can see that all right. Yeah, this one is 3.5. Okay, so this is more of a early morning beer. <laughs> yeah, I'm only kidding. I don't suggest drinking these first thing in the morning. Um, you know, have an egg bap first. <laughs> Four Pines Brewing Fruity, Fresh and Floral. Go. Oops, this one on the back here. Uh, fresh from an abandoned airfield in Dishworth, this crisp and delicious pale ale is ready for takeoff. So, oh, ah. Okay, so I'm guessing that every box is the same because on the inside, it has little write ups, uh, which I missed before. So, uh, Sweet Child of Pine says on here. Uh, hails from the Weird Beard Brewery in Cycle Friendly Chiswick. Okay, uh, this hoppy hero's piney awesomeness is cranked all the way up to 11. Rock and or roll. <laughs> all right, so that's, uh, that was Child of Pine. What does it say about the others? Oh, I, didn't, I didn't spot these, so okay. So uh, let this everyday hero rescue from the everyday blandness. Super powered by floral citrusy hops, it takes taste to a new and to new and dizzy heights. Okay, that was this one. I'm all over the place here. I'm, I've only had a, I've only had a half a drink. I'm all over the show. Mm. I can recommend that. Sweet child of pine. Uh, okay, what did you say about the cranberry? Uh, brewed alongside herds of ginger cows and red deer on the remote working farm in Argyle, the, this cranberry and orange pale uh, packs a real zingy flavour punch. Oh, right, okay. So you get punched when you drink that one. Um, right, and. Oh, lost my door. <laughs> so the Pacific one, this one here, Pacific one, says in here. Uh, can read it. Uh, think of Kylie and Jason, uh, sun-kissed beaches and catching a wave. Uh, think of big fruity hoppy aromas. You, uh, then you'll be thinking of Pacific Ale from Four Pines, Struth. I'm guessing it's Australian. We are at number six now and another tin. And this is, oh, like that. oh Stay Puffed, Tiny Rebel. Now Tiny Rebel I have heard of. And this is a Irish cream marshmallow porter. That's more like it. Yeah, marshmallow beer seems to be the 2019 thing. I don't know if it's, uh, it's been around before, but I've never, never seen so many marshmallows beers. This would be the, I've already had two this year. So yeah, and I've liked them all. Marshmallow stouts. Get them while you can. They're lovely, 4.2. So yeah, a, a Bailey's, Bailey's and, uh, and marshmallow. Uh, what does it say on the door? What's the uh, scores on the doors? It says here, a marshmallow porter from Tiny River Brewery, question mark. 
Uh, it must be Christmas, especially if you add Irish cream into the mix. Ding dong, indeed. Uh, Irish cream stay puffed is a perfect for is perfect for a cold winter's night or lunchtime. There uh, you go. So yeah, definitely looking forward to that one. All right, number nine already. Ooh, in the can. This one's black. This one looks like Siren. I have had Siren before, but I've not had Yulu before. Mm, look at this. Look at that can. Look at those. Look how mesmerizing it is. You will do as we say. Okay, so this is a, a session pale ale. So I'm guessing uh, 3.6. Uh, yep. You could probably gulp that down in one. What does it say here? Let me just get off the door. It says, uh, named in honor of the ancient and venerable Chinese tea master, Yu Lu, this intricate pale ale dances mystically across the tongue with hints of bergamot, bergamot <laughs> uh, orange, and lemon zest. So it's like a tin, it's like a Earl Grey tea and beer in a tin. Ah, uh, pretty good. All right, sounds refreshing. Number eight. Uh, oh, Yeasty Boys, another brewery I have heard of and I have had beers from, uh, but I've never had Pink Frost before. Uh, okay, we have some religious imagery on the back. <laughs> what does it say about Pink Frost? It says, uh, let me read this. Pink Frost, uh, from Wellington's very own Yeasty Boys. Uh, I'll rise, uh, raise a glass of hip hops and hobbits with this orange blossom infused brew. So I guess this is a New Zealand one. Excellent. Okay, 4.4%. Pop that one there. Right, number. What are we up to now? Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Ooh, Julius. 45 BC. Uh, I have never heard of this one before. Who's this by? Uh, oh, it's Belgian. And this is 8.5. Ooh. So the uh, yeah, the 9th of December is going to be fun. <laughs> what day of the week's that? Uh, that's a Monday. <laughs> start the day off. Start the week off as you mean to go on with an 8.5. Uh, it's sitting here uh, on the back of the door. It says this strong blonde from her garden, Ho Garden, packs a delicious hit of ripe fruits and peppery cloves. Mm. Yeah, and clothes not one of my favourite flavours, but you know. Uh, Julius is the stuff that empires were built on. Okay, right, so a clovey can of beer that's 8.5. I will give it the benefit of the doubt. In there. So yeah, we're having a bit of a, a wide range of uh, strengths as well here. Okay, number 10. Right along. Okay, number 10. Oh, right, okay. Evil Twin, I have heard of. Uh, and this is, how does that say? Sanguinum Orantiaco. I think that's what that says. Can you read that? Sanguinum, something with blood, blood, blood orange or something, is it? I don't know. Sour ale with blood orange added. Oh, there you go, see? Uh, now, I'm not a big fan of sour. There's a, a what's that? Um, is it Goose? Goose Boons, those kind of sour beers. I, I don't, that's my beer knowledge kind of runs out at that point. Is it, is it a Saison? I'm not a huge fan of. Um, but, you know, uh, who knows? This one might be uh, uh, an exception. And it's only 3.25. So, interesting can as well. Completely black on the back there. Good light. So, uh, and it says on here, oh, I've ripped it. No, oh, never mind. <laughs> Um, it says here, Evil Twins Sanguinem Rantico is a blood orange sour all the way uh, from the Big Apple. All right, so uh, American beer, packed full of tangy flavour. It's like a, it's like totally fruitastic, totally fruitastic. Right, so I've got to be careful when I'm opening these doors. I'm giving them, a, I'm sort of ripping them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay, another bottle. Uh, oh, this is a. Pretty trendy looking design. This is emergency chairs, Bikella, hazy table beer, emergency chairs. All right. <laughs> yeah, I like the uh, I like the name of that, and I like that colour scheme as well. That was pretty cool. What's going on there? Uh, remember that crushed under a lot of chairs. It looks like hazy table beer. Okay, I've never heard of table beer. Is that a thing? Um, 
what classifies it as a table beer. And again, I can't uh, can't read the back. I think it's about 3.4 in strength. Let's see if it tells us what a table beer is. I'm guessing it's they're trying to be like a table wine. Uh, is that something that you'd have with food? Uh, all right. When everyone's around the table for Christmas, the emergency chairs come out. Ah, that's what emergency chairs are. Uh, this table beer from uh, innovative, innovative, innovative nomadic, no, innovative, innovative. <laughs> I can't say that word. But I can't say innovative uh, nomadic brewer. Nicola makes an ideal festive triple. All right, nobadic. So if they move around, that must be quite uh, arduous moving all that stuff around. Right, next one. We are up to uh, the fifteenth. No, we are up to the twelfth. <laughs> and oh, look at this. That is a design I like. I like that color scheme there. That looks a bit like uh, I was going to say metal. It looks like metal. It looks like the uh, metal album cover, but slightly different colours. Right, so who is this? Who is this? Moonlight Maze, Oh Brother Brewing, with the White Hag. So what's this? This is a collab, it looks like. Um, you can see that there. Uh, let's say on the, on the doer, it says here, oh, that's emergency chairs. Right. I'll remove that door. Okay, the White Hag more politely known as Irish folklore's all-seeing mother nature, was tempted, uh, was team, has teamed up with County Wicklow's O Brother Brewing to bring you this truly, har truly harmony, I'll, I'll start this again, sorry. Uh, the White Hag, more politely known as Irish folklore's all-seeing mother nature, has teamed up with County Wicklow's O Brother Brewing to bring you this truly harmonious, hazy IPA. All right, so hazy IPA in a very cool can, and this one is 4.4 percent right. We are on to the 13th, which is my birthday. So let's see what I'm going to get on my birthday this year. We're going to have a Camden, Camden, we're going to have a Camden, um, Special Hells. So is this is a lager. Ah, great, lager, yay. <laughs> no, I don't mind lager now and again. Uh, it's okay, uh, but this might be great. So um, this one is 5.8, all right, okay. Special Hells. I have had Camden beers before. They've always been very good. I've never had a bad one. Um, and I love again, another lovely, you can't tell, but this is like a nicely textured um, label. Uh, oh, I'm not put that one back. I'm put that one there. Oh, I was talking to my third thing. Refreshments. Right, what does it say? It says here, Hell's Bells. Uh, Christmas really is getting close. Celebrate the day with a bottle of Camden Town Brewery's Special Hell's crisp and dry German style beer. All right, yeah, I do like German style beer. Uh, the Paulina, that one, Paulina Hell. I've had that one, that's good. Uh, right, number 14. Oop, again, we'll get up the door. And Oh, big can. Into the woods. Festive gingerbread ale. All right, so I have had some ginger beers, be ginger flavored ales before. Can't sound crazy, but you know, uh, this is another four pine. Uh, sorry, this is a four pure brewing company beer, and it is uh, 5.9. So, got a bit of strength behind it, and it's a nice, nice big can as well. And it says. <coughs> Run, run, run as fast as you can. Can, uh, catch yourself a gingerbread man. This spiced ale from Four Pure Brewing Company is worth the chase. All right, so, something uh, gingery. Number 15. Oh, I just realized the pictures. <laughs> the pictures on the front also give you a bit of a, a clue as well. Ah. So this one is a bear with a tree, uh, and inside, oh, better not lose that, we have, oh, okay, uh, La, La Virgen, La Virgin, La Virgen, Pinot, um, Vienna Lager, I think that is, interesting, okay, anyway, 
I very much like this label. Look at the colour screen, it's excellent, isn't it? So, this is Sundrench Madrid, home of the iconic bear and strawberry tree statue. Bear and strawberry tree statue, as well as the renowned Cerveza La Virgin Brewery, it's the beer of the Virgin. Uh, their Pinot beer, has the name suggests, is pretty damn piney. Piney, I've never, this is, must be a new thing, I've never had piney beer before. Uh, but uh, looking forward to trying it. And this one is 6%. All right, so. Look at goes. Right, so, uh, number 18, actually. Mm. Let's finish up the ball. All right, we're up to 18, no, no, 16. All right, just keep getting ahead of myself. All right, another four pints Pacific Ale. Okay, a uh, repeat. Um, wasn't expecting a repeat. All the way from Her Garden for you, this Hoppy Pale Ale from De Molen. Ah, oh dear. Okay, so I think they may have made a mistake. Um, I've got a repeat. I've got a double. Got, got, not got need. Uh, they've given me another one of these instead of the uh, De Molen. Oh dear. Okay, so never mind. Well, you can see it says there, De Molen is what should have been in this box. And instead, we got another Pacific beer. Okay, so. Never mind. Right, number 17. Is. Okay, Anger. Oh, Anger Brauweiser. <laughs> I remember Anger Brew being a being advertised in the 80s and the 90s in the UK. I don't know if it was a generic term for beer or whether it's an actual brewery, but uh, yeah, I've heard the name. Uh, Brauweiser. So this is what, a, a white beer, wheat beer? Um, let's have a look here. Boink. Right. <clears throat> Liquid bread with a whole bunch of banana aromas. This Brauweiser from Eyinger in the deepest Bavarian, in deepest Bavaria, Home to fairy tale castles and all things sausagey. <laughs> What's not to like? <laughs> all right, so banana beer, banana flavored beer. Nice. Okay, cool. And that is on 5.1. <laughs> right, I started to get rosy cheeked. I only had about like half a pint. Mm. Hello. If they're all as good as this um, sweet child of pine, I'll be very happy. Right, where are we up to? Number 18. Junk. Oh, look at this. Knees to the door. That's a great, crazy design. I love that colour scheme. Wow, oh, intense size. Wow. Does that remind you of? Nothing on earth, I don't think. Right, knees to the door. Never heard of knees to the door. Pure craft. DDH Pale Ale. Wow, very interesting. Um, is that a three or an eight? That's a, no, it's a three. I think that's a three. Yeah, it's a 3.6, not 8.6. Oh, never mind. And uh, the wrap up is, says, uh, Knees to the Door is a delicious IPA with a wonderful hint, with a wonderful hit of hops. Okay, it probably should have been number 21, but this amazing beer from Knees was just too good to keep. Number 21. I don't get the reference. You'd have got the reference if you could read properly, you blind ass motherfucker. Okay. Dark Arts Hazelnut. All right, that's good. I like hazelnut. And it says here, surreal stout. I like hazelnut and I like stout. This this sounds good. This might be might be a wiener. Uh, the can. Um, who's this by? Uh, Magic Rock Brewing. Ooh. 6%. Interesting. It says on here, uh, steeped in all the mystique that Huddersfield has to offer, Dark Arts Stout is truly out of this world. Uh, Magic Rock Brewing, um, Magic Rock bring all their brewing wizardry to bear on this indulgent chocolatey brew from Huddersfield. Nice. I like the sound of that. I'm a very big fan of stouts. Um, 
pretty things. All right, oh, okay, yeah, this looks familiar. The bottle, Wild Beer Murmur. I have had Wild Beers before. I do not believe I've had this Murmur one. Um, so I don't think I've had any of these. I don't think I've ever tried any of these beers, so this is good. Uh, why, okay, wine yeasts, vitri vinous hops, root, drink mildly different. All right, uh, this one is 5%. And it is described as, uh, this is a wild one, uh, left to age in a barrel, things get a little unpredictable. So how does wild beer murmur taste? Well, it's complicated, sweet, dry, bitter, with, a, with some acidity, but most of all delicious. Okay, all right, so yeah, normally don't go for the soury ones or the, the, the whiny ones, but um, who knows. Number 21. Almost there. Is ba, 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 ba. Oh my god? Can you actually read that? Anything on there? Uh, it's called hypo hypothermia. All right. Okay. So sorry, brewing Tallinn. Is that? It's a northern rye ale from. Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say Estonia. I might be getting wrong. Apologies if you're from that part of the world. Um, sorry, bring a little Nordic know-how to brewing in Estonia. <laughs> Um, uh, they've taken a wry look at beer with hypothermia, a treat for the taste buds that's best served chilled. Okay, this one can go in the fridge, and it is 5.1. Where are we now? 22. 22. In case you didn't believe me. Right, interesting coloured bottle. Uh, an interesting coloured beer. This is very clear. Look at that. It's very see-through. <laughs> this is a Belgian Blonde, and I can't read who this is by. Limited release 2019. Ah, oh, Adrienne? Adrienne? Adrienne! Uh, uh, okay, and it says on here, um, it's time to raise a glass to generations of unsung Bastille's women. Uh, there's no better way to pay them tribute with this, with a drop of this appropriately named strong blonde Adrienne. Boss steals women. Do they work in breweries? You have to look that up. Boss steals is a brewery in, of all places, <laughs> Belgium, of course. Right, number twenty-three. Getting close now. And number 23 is Guava Christmas. Get it? Guava Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Um, <laughs> Guava and Pale or Guava Pale Ale. Oh, Thornbridge. Ah, Thornbridge. Makers of possibly my favourite beer of all time. They're Jaipur. Uh, well, well, my favourite beer that you can get in a lot of pubs anyway. Uh, possibly not my favourite beer of all time. Uh, that would probably be Nogni, uh, one of their um, IPAs. Or could it be the Kentucky Bourbon Stout? Oh no, is it Kentucky Breakfast Stout? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that was yeah, possibly one of the probably one of the best beers I've ever had. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, Guava Christmas. Okay, for Thornbridge. Uh, this is a UK one, and it is uh, 4.5. And the back over the door says, <clears throat> brewed on the Thornbridge, Thornbridge estate. This Guava Christmas is a class act. A guava-ish hoppy miracle that hails from the home of the legendary Bakewell Tart. Mind-blowing stuff. Fantastic. So Derbyshire. Ever been to Bakewell? It's quite a nice place. <clears throat> and I don't advise going in the middle of summer because it's very busy. Right, last, last beer. And it's going to be a Grand Prestige. Mm, okay, interesting. This one looks like a uh, very interesting looking beer. Uh, oh my Christ, on a bike, it's 10%. <laughs> wow, yeah, finish off with a bang, why don't you? Oh, you can see that. Uh, ding, 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 10%. Uh, yeah, okay, this one, uh, it's uh, not a beer for drinking, it's a beer for laying down and avoiding. <laughs> right, well, they certainly uh, know how to give you a, a big finish. Uh, I was gonna say happy ending there, but that would not be appropriate. Um, right, so uh, this magnificently milled, this magnificently multi barley wine is a right royal treat. Uh, Hertog, uh, I think Hertog is the brewery. You can see that at the top, it says there, Hertog. Uh, 
make that up. Um, Herzog joins Grand Prestige. Uh, her no, Herzog Jans. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon. Herzog Jan is the brewery. Herzog Jans Grand Prestige is aged for longer to develop its fruity aroma and complex flavour as well. At ten percent, um, you're not going to complain about uh, anything <laughs> ever again. <laughs> right. So I'll have to let you know how I get on with that one. And that was it. That was the uh, Advent Beer Adventure from Beer Hawk. Uh, Advent calendar, so um, I should have said at the beginning, spoiler alert, um, I'll, I'll, you know, uh, if you've had one, if you've got one of these for Christmas and you know what you're going to get um, in store for, let me know if you've had one of these, let me know if you have had any of these beers before and what you think of them, and uh, yeah, I might do an update at some point, I'll let you know how I get on with them, I'm sure you'll probably see me sipping them at, uh, during some videos between now and the end of Christmas. Uh, unless I end up drinking them all tonight. All right, that's been it for me. Um, I'll say thank you very much and uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.